welcome to Somerville Media Center's update, school committee superintendent, and joining me once again is chair of the Somerville School Committee, Carrie Norman. Carrie Norman, how are you on this fine September 16th, 2020? Uh, I'm excited for the students to come back on Friday. I will also say on a personal note, I have never had seasonal allergies before and I have them now uh, I, so much so that I actually went and got a COVID test because I was sneezing and coughing um, and before we talk to schools I'm going to ask you to indulge me um, on behalf of my next door neighbor and dear friend Pete DeMarco who lost his wife uh, Laura Le uh, Levy outside of to an asthma attack outside of the Somerville Hospital um, he just posted and I want to share this reminder that the next 10 days are the highest incident of asthma attacks out of the entire year. And so um, Pete has taken what was a devastating experience and has turned it into an opportunity to educate and advocate for better policies. And my message from on behalf of Pete is if you have asthma, please make sure that your nebulizers, your inhalers are full and ready. And if you start to have an attack, even if it feels familiar, make sure you tell someone because these next 10 days um, are significant. And, and also, you know, we're in an urban city. Urban districts tend to have higher rates of asthma. We know that a lot of our students have asthma. So um, that's my pull-up service announcement to start, kick us off with. Terry, thank you so much. And thank you to Peter DeMarco for continuing to be an advocate, even through his own grief. He's worried oh. about other people. He, he is the embodiment of grace and good deeds. I can't say enough. I am blessed to have him next door. Well, thank you, Peter. So Carrie, um, you mentioned uh, we are going back, we meaning the education system here in the Somerville, uh, Somerville district. Mm -hmm. We're going back on Friday the 18th. Can you explain just a little bit why we chose a Friday to <laughs> go back? Uh, um, Cliff notes there, Carrie, cliff yeah. notes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first of all, I will say our educators have been in full swing most of the summer and they came back in full the weekend, the Monday before Labor Day. Uh, the reason for the 18th, and I understand that it is a Friday, uh, is our normal uh, starting date would have been the Wednesday before Labor Day when the, when the state gave us 10 extra days of professional development to deduct from the 180 days of instructional time that we need. We added those 10 days. Uh, unfortunately, it ends on a, starts on a Friday, but I will say nothing about this year is typical or normal. Um, some people are very excited. Some people are very frustrated. I will say uh, it will be, I anticipate a day of uh, learning how to log on and getting your, if you're in my house, right, getting your kid up at, you know, 10 minutes before he has to turn on his computer because he hasn't done that for several months. Um, so that's why it's that Friday. Got it. Then into full swing uh, mm -hmm. Monday. Um, yes. So why don't, if you can, um, walk us through what you anticipate to happen on Friday with the school system going back in full virtual mode. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that first week with teachers actually trying to deliver lesson plans um, how you think the students are going to react to this, the parents, um, teachers. School committee isn't done yet. I understand that. Oh. We're going to continue to work on the plan with the superintendent's yes. office. But why don't you take it away for a little bit and kind of walk us through? Uh, so like any beginning of the school year, right, the first couple of days, it's settling in, it's getting regulated, it's getting used to routines. Uh, it is going to be more so this year. I mean, we are very aware that it has been an unusual year. The pandemic, the very direct uh, experience in the, the Black Lives Matter and our, the, the really, um, as a country and as a community, starting to really dig in, struggle, be more honest, discuss what it means uh, what equity really means and what has been our community members, especially our families of color, students of color's experience. So with that lens, the first, uh, oh, there will be a very clear emphasis on getting kids reoriented. And that doesn't just mean learning at your log on, although that, that will be part of it, but also checking in. How have you been this summer? Uh, what is, 
what are your needs? Do, do, you know, we've been having reach out and reaching out to families already, but as you go to log on, if your hotspot isn't working, you don't have connectivity, all of, so it is both, there's the instructional part, there's the, the, the social emotional, the heart part, and then there's also the logistical part of um, can you access it? Are there still problems? Can we, you know, how do we address all of that? So it will be um, exciting and also a, a time to remember to be as patient and kind, even at a time where it's very frustrating. I mean, I, I've gotten some emails uh, at a fevered pitch saying, thank God we're starting on a Friday. I only want to start one day. And others saying, I can't believe you're starting on a Friday. And what I take from that is we are all uh, frustrated and pushed to our limit and, and starting and try to figure out how we're going to have more robust learning while families are still working and the logistics we're still working out with the rec department and the programming. And there is nothing typical about this year. And so, um, I mean, I miss the days where you buy like, you know, a new lunchbox and some new sneakers and you're good to go. That is not this year. And I will say that our educators and our our staff across the board have been working full tilt. Uh, that I am encouraged and optimistic that the the learning of this this fall, this year, while we're remote, will be significantly better uh, than it was in the spring when we were reacting to a crisis. So, does that kind of does that get to it? Do you have something more specific? I'm, I mean, I can talk about this. No, I, mean, I you know setting it up i i do have questions and one of them is a completely off the wall question oh um, my favorite but it is also indicative of what's happening with the parents and the students yeah. um, going back is that anecdotally um i have a large family you know that and yeah. one of the little ones asked uh mom about three weeks ago oh that's great we're going back to school when can we go clothes shopping and it didn't quite register with the mom what she what the little one was saying was that yeah. i don't care that i'm going back on a computer i need new clothes to be sitting yeah. there so my friends can see it and you yeah. know it made sense mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then another piece of the family um maybe this has something to do with the male part of it but the male nine-year-old when it was suggested that they go get some uh, close for back to school, the response was, why? <laughs> so I'm not so sure um, that that's at the top of the list for educators or for school committee. But you know what? For some kids, it's important that they look good on screen. Yeah, well, it's also, it's a return to something familiar, right? That's a rite of passage. The fall comes, you get your new shoes, you get a new backpack, you, you meet your teachers, you meet your, your, you know, some kids run in the room, other kids are like, no, I don't want to go back. But any of those routines of going back to school, uh, the new clothes, I absolutely get that. I, uh, I want, I mean, we are all longing for some sense of normalcy. I mean, I, I don't want to say we want to return, uh, entirely to what we had before because I th this this has COVID really has exposed a lot of things uh, especially inequities in healthcare and, and education uh, well, employment wh wh why don't we do why don't we do this Carrie that, yeah um, you know so for the for and I may get in trouble for saying this but I think for the vast majority of the mm -hmm. students that are going back in a virtual world yes um, it'll be difficult It'll be difficult for them. It'll be difficult for the instructors and the teachers. It'll mm -hmm. be difficult for the parents. But mm -hmm. we have a group of students who have, um, please forgive what I'm saying, it, it, they have needs that cannot be accommodated in the virtual world. And oh, yeah. Uh, some of our special needs folks. Absolutely. Some of, our, some of our kids who are fluent in English, but their parents may not be. Mm -hmm. um, if the parents are there trying to assist them during the school day, they may not be understanding. So can you kind of walk us through how the virtual world is gonna handle those, those students' needs? Um, 
so I, I'll answer that in two ways. One is once we're able to get it, into the buildings, we will be prioritizing our younger students, our special education students, and our ELL students, right, who just aren't able to access it in the same way. Uh, to that, I also want to do a little public announcement, which is uh, next Monday at 5.30, this city is going to be hosting a town hall about reopening the buildings. It is going to be a marathon of, uh, because the, the town hall is at 5.30, it will be in uh, interpreted into the three, four, three uh, target languages of Spanish, Portuguese, and Haitian Creole. So uh, part of this discussion is what is the health of the buildings, what we need to do, and the testing. That will be from 5.30 to 7, and then at 7 will be the school committee meeting. Um, last Monday we met, and it was it, it was all about the instruction and how we're going to reopen and what's been planned and how it will look like. But I do think uh, that the importance of the buildings being open, I, I, I know it's a long night. Uh, I did not realize that the city was scheduling on the same day as ours and I looked to move the school committee meeting back a week, but it's Yom Kippur. So um, it will be a long night, and if you are unable to join us, and I know it's dinner time and bath time and all sorts of things between 5.30 and 9, but they also will be recorded. So it's important information. Um, and as I will say always, if you have a question or a concern or you don't understand cohort A or cohort B or how I get to the rec program, please, please, please contact your principal, your teacher, central office staff, your school committee members. Uh, there are so many moving parts and if you don't understand all of them uh you're in very 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 good company so, so Gary, Gary, one the remote what yeah. is the platform that they're going to be using is this um through the city's webinar system or is this a zoom call no uh so a lot of it will we are simplifying the number of platforms uh a lot of it will be done through google classroom because there's a number of uh components that will be more integrated we realize uh Families can't be juggling a million different logons. If you are at a middle school or a high school level where you have multiple teachers and multiple teachers having multiple platforms, it was too much. So a lot of it will be on Zoom. We now have, in spring, we got a, our own license through the city, so we were able to put in more securities uh, to avoid the Zoom bombing, which was uh, disturbing. I had it happen to me once. Um, so we're, we're limiting the number of platforms that families, uh, there's also training videos in, in different languages on how to log on, how to access it, how to support your student. We, we have a full-time family liaisons. They have been in contact with families. Uh, all of our student support staff, our deans of students, our adjustment counselors. Um, there's a a small army of people wanting to help what it will look like i mean some kids are ready some and and eager and some kids it'll be harder for the younger students there'll be uh, less time expected on a zoom uh, uh, excuse me online in front of the computer uh more like an hour to an hour two hour increasing time uh, the duration over time our high school students they will be it, more like four hours of instructional time. That in time does not mean, you know, four hours of a lecture. It, in some ways, it will parallel what it, they, a teacher does in class, where often at the start of a, a class, they will teach a new skill, and then and students will have five or 10 minutes, you know, to, to work on it independently, and then they regroup and assess who understands it. And so, um, if, if you think your kid is going to be frozen at the screen all day, that is not what we, that's not healthy for kids, it's not healthy for teachers, and frankly, it's unrealistic for parents to also be monitoring that. So let me, um, let me see if I can try to format it so that I understand it. When I was in school, you mm -hmm. went to a class that lasted, you know, sometimes there were classes that were a half hour, some kind classes were an hour, but you always got a break in between yeah. classes because you got up from that classroom and you moved to a different classroom. Yes. Is that kind of how this thing is being formatted for the school? Yeah, there, there are, so it, a lot of it is age, uh, dep grade dependent, right? Um, so there will, there are, for the longer day, there are breaks scheduled in. Okay. There are specialists, you will still have 
um, your gym class, your phys ed, and that could be, you know, how do you move around in, the, in your space? Um, music, all of the specialist music, are they, they will, uh, how are we gonna do art? Um, they will still be in the curriculum, and so there are breaks. We know okay. that this is not a healthy way. No one, even in person, we don't expect students how about, to, you know. So, so how about lunch breaks? You get that all yes. into the Yes, there will be now. lunch breaks. Um, okay. uh, and also important, uh, we will be delivering you know, grab and go meals at the elementary schools. We will not be doing it at the high school um, for a number of reasons. There are, it, Mainly so it's, the construction. That's it's a construction on. zone, but also when we looked at where the concentration of students are, there's not as many as concentrated around the high school. Uh, as there are around our elementary schools and what we know about a number of our high school students They also have younger siblings at the elementary school So that was a decision to keep kids safe and out of the construction zone and also yeah. how do you use? Resources as effectively as possible. So yeah. the grab-and-go meals at breakfast and lunch will, I think it starts every day next week if we haven't already started it this week. Okay. Okay. So, so it looks like what is in play is atypical of going back to school. First few days, you know, are going to be introductions. Kids are going to be anxious to see their friends. And yeah. there's yeah. not going to be really a structure, structure. But as you have mentioned, that Monday uh, virtual meeting for parents and anybody yes. else Yes. is extremely important. So I have a couple of questions on that. Would it be helpful um, for a SCAT TV or a Channel 3 to replay that for... for uh, I, I am so appreciative of your efforts to get as much information out to people. I think uh, the especially the one at 530, uh, the, about the buildings and the testing, more of the logistics of how we go back, um, would be very helpful. Uh, well, the reason I offered that too is, you know, I made a suggestion, um, uh, you know, I have try to stay in my world, but sometimes people ask me for my advice. So my suggestion was not only to be showing that on government channel, yeah, but show it on the education channel and show it on ours as yeah. well. That I, way I, you're blasting that information out to the parents. Yes, yeah. and I, I think, uh, while some families read every email uh, eagerly, and others have said, it's too much. I can't keep it straight. And in the frustrating part for all of us, and the confusing part is the information has changed as we've gotten directives from the state, from uh, as we're doing programming with the REC, uh, there has been, there was some confusing messages about the cohorts of A and B that have gone out and have had to be, re-explained, walked back and re-explained and it's, it's to be expected though, Carrie. I mean, yeah. this is all new to everybody. Yeah. You know? I, I would also urge um, every, the kindness and patience. I mean, we are all in the same boat and, and many of our teachers, our central office staff uh, also have young children at home. And so they, it's, it's from an empathetic, they understand, we understand, I, I'm, a, I'm a mom too. So it's been frustrating and people are really, I would just ask people to assume the best that there is not, uh, someone suggested, you know, the superintendent sends out information on a Friday because you don't want us to see it. I'm like, no, it's because by the end of the week we have more information to share with you and we're trying to send it out on a consistent day. So I, when someone complains like that, I know it's not really about the, the date of the email. It's, it's, this is a trying time for everybody. And so. Right, I think a lot of people are gonna express their frustration in different ways. Oh, but, but yes. The, mes the message that's coming out of the system is be patient. Uh, we, we are trying our best and, and I think. And also, know, uh, if you have a question or something's not clear, please, please, please reach out. Right. We will sort it out. We will get you the answer. Um, please don't throw up your hands and say, I don't, I can't figure it out. Um, and we will be checking in with kids and families, but it is much more helpful if you have a question or a concern or um, 
uh, you know, you, you have a kid like mine who says, I know what my login is and doesn't share it. And, you know, uh, you can get that information from your, your students, your child's school. Okay. So, so sorry, go ahead. go ahead. So, no, so I just the, don't... The, the resources should be there and mm -hmm. we're going to try to all be patient with each other. So next week, uh, we launch into this thing. There are going to be yes. some bugs. There are going to be some things that have to be worked out. Assuming that we get a lot of this stuff worked out. And let me ask you one quick question. I yeah. got it for just about 10 minutes before we went on air this morning um, from a charter school teacher that I know very well. They went back last week and mm -hmm. they had trouble with Google Classroom. Uh, have we got any word yet that Google Classroom is going to be able to perform the way that we're expecting them to perform? Well, my question about that is, is it Google or what well, we haven't? I mean, talk about the great experiment. We, uh, our internet has not been tried in the same way. We have never had millions of people working at home and millions of students now going to school remotely. I don't know what the capability is. I can tell you in my neighborhood, uh, when it gets to be 5.30 or 6, 7, I often get bumped out because so many people are logged on. Uh, and so, I mean, this is a great experiment. What are, what are what's the infrastructure? No, I haven't heard. I, I'm bringing that to your attention because it, yeah. it, it, they experienced it uh, last week. With, yeah. As you say, it's about capacity. Right. You know, Google Classroom is not this infinite thing that you can start all of a sudden, right. you know, having millions of users all at one right. time during the same condensed period of time during the day. So I, I'm just fearful on the technical side. Of I, I, absolutely, these are questions that I have raised. I mean, I have also uh, encouraged the city council members I've spoken with to explore citywide Wi-Fi, right? I mean, we're, we're solving the connectivity problem one student at a time, one family at a time. And I can tell you it has been collectively thousands of hours and, and time well spent, right? We need our kids to have that connection. If we had citywide Wi-Fi, that would uh, solve a lot of the problems. With high speed logistics. throughput. I mean, yes. you, you could, if you give somebody, you know, 10 year old product to use, it's not gonna solve the problem. Exactly. So it, it, it's kind of out of my wheelhouse to solve that problem, but, um, you know, certainly I've been in discussion, you know, and other people know that the media center is in discussion with the Somerville Public Schools for a lot of the yeah. after school, out of school yes. programming. Um, and one of the things that I constantly talk to the staff about at the media center is throughput. You know, you're, you're now taking on a lot of this stuff that we didn't do before right. um, in a much more volume centered way. So make sure that our connections can handle what we're yes. actually performing. Let's move on a little bit, Carrie. So next week, hopefully, keep fingers crossed, technical works out well. Teachers are happy to see their kids again. The kids are happy to see the teachers again. The restlessness kind of settles down a little bit. You're going to be constant, you and the administration, the superintendent, you're going to be constantly evaluating what's going on. T tell me what you think will happen in around the Thanksgiving time frame. Do you think we will have enough information to make a decision about either continuing virtual in January or will there be some type of a hybrid system that you'll be able to deploy in January? Uh, Joe, I, I, you know me, I'm a straight shooter. Uh, I, I can't predict the future. I mean, so much of this is dependent on the numbers and the virus, right? Is it... Uh, what that looks like. I mean, right now we just uh, we're part of the Greater Boston League for our high school sports, and right now a uh, number of our our fellow uh, towns are in the red, so they can't play. So we just we're moving fall sports to what's called fall two. It's going to be in the spring, uh, early spring. Will they get to play then? I I can't say. Do I hope so? Absolutely. What I will say is that this has been a time of great innovation. And so our athletic director, Stan Vieira, who came into the system last year with no gyms, and now this year he has a pandemic, he is working on how do we turn Dillboy Field 
into a conditioning site outside and have the teens and students, you don't even have to be on a team. How do we keep that physical uh, health going? How do we get kids, especially the high school who, students who are not in the same level of programming other through the record community schools? Some of them I know are gonna be at the Somerville Media Center and your, your support and creativity is so deeply appreciated, but the high school students also need to see each other. I mean, there's another variable at play next week and then the next couple of weeks, and it's the weather. We have ordered tents uh, throughout the city. You will see them at different schools, the Dillboy. We are trying to, in any way possible, have that human interaction in safe ways so that a teacher can meet their students in small groups outside, the special education evaluations for student need that were halted last spring. They have been testing outside now. I mean, when I say we are trying at all kinds of new things, I really do mean it, but we're in New England. The weather also matters, right? And and if part of the ventilation, I mean, this Monday night, I, I hope we will have the final report from the engineers about the buildings, but um, we're in New England. So if part of the ventilation is having windows open and circulating air in that way, well, that might mean one thing October, early November, but it could mean a very different thing in January. Right. Um, well, let's let's hope, Carrie. Let's hope. That's yes. you know, I, I I don't think. Never say you don't think. People will think you don't. I yeah. think that um, the plan right now, as it's being executed, when it starts on Friday, um, and then continues into next week and maybe the week beyond. Um, there will be some retooling that needs to be done. Sure. That's the launch of any new product. And if you Absolutely. think about virtual online learning, it is a new Absolutely. product that's being launched. So, Both I, in terms of instruction, but also in terms of families managing. I mean, this is new for all of us. So uh, are there going to be bumps the in the road? A hundred percent. What's the key word there, Carrie, that you opened up the show? You used a key word and we're going to continue using it. Patience. Patience and kindness. Patience and kindness. Carrie, we only got about 10 seconds left for all the work that the school committee, the superintendent's office, the, soup, the city administration, and most importantly, the parents and the students and mm -hmm. the teachers. Yes. What they have put into this, let's hope it's a success. We're going to be there uh, for the after school program and the out of school time. We're gonna continue working with everybody to try to make this a success for the continuing education of the kids of this city. Thank you so much, Joe, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Carrie. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you next week or beyond. For the Somerville Media Center with Chair of the Somerville School Committee, Carrie Norman, I'm Joe Lynch. Please stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.